Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. This is our Let's Play against the Devious Artificial Intelligence. Uh, the AI has done a pretty good job. I mean, the AI in this game, you can only imagine how complex it would be to program such an AI. There's just so many different permutations of what it can do. I thought it did a really nice job uh, of its defense of Moscow, or maybe we just overextended ourselves. You could argue probably both ways. Uh, but on the offensive, it hasn't been quite as impressive, and now we're getting ourselves into a much better shape as we move through 1942. Uh, there's uh, Hope is alive. Hope is alive. It's our first playthrough of the game. Of course, the second or third playthrough uh, I would do some things differently, certainly, uh, but we're still going to try to win this one, and I think we can if we continue to uh, play better. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Hey, guys, how's it going? CJ's here, Battling Geezer, John Chapel. Welcome. Bananies, always, always happy when you're here, Bananies. David Bartello, Anthony Watson, good to see you all. Hey, Malcolm, how's it going? Erzbeck, Yakov is here. Uh, <laughs> Yakov, you said gluten day, and uh, I, I thought you said I thought you were saying gluten day, like you know this is the one day you allow yourself to eat gluten. Uh, but uh, uh, but anyway, uh, hey Peter, how's it going? Um, let's go ahead and jump out on the map. Uh, we've got oh well, that it just did a little click. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No spinning wheel. Let's not do that today. Uh, YouTube is showing me I'm still good. I'm going to hold on here one more second. If anybody got kicked off, uh, sometimes that's Twitch. And Twitch is a, a different beast altogether. YouTube is a lot more stable, I'll say that. Um, all right, I'm going to click off that. Only a minor glitch. Let's hope that's true. Okay, I'm going to soldier on here. And rifle core here, and he's got three divisions there. I think there's another rifle core out here somewhere, but they are, have really been holding us up. But before we get over there and figure out how we're going to undo all that, I'm going to go back through this stuff, just make sure there's nothing else we want or could move, um, and make sure that where we have our panzers out here is where we want them. Now, we did cut the rail line there, and we've cut the rail line here. So we've cut both rail lines, which I guess would be uh, objective one, but the primary, you know, is a, well, what's the best way to put it? That That's what we wanted to at least do, okay? So that was the first thing we at least wanted to do. Now, I, I'm not particularly happy with how spread this out this is, but I don't think he's got a whole lot that can come this way. I guess we'll see. If it's behind the Dnieper, it can't get there in time, unless he's got quite a few forces right here this should be okay i hope now if we zoom down in here uh it'd come up in the comments and otherwise we you know need to get rid of this stuff i'm not i want to believe me i mean uh if i had enough movement points i would i think i'm gonna save these for next turn though now he may try to go up in here or if he went here he would isolate this unit and potentially these all three of these units uh but i think we maybe have enough zone of control to keep him out of that hex it'll be interesting mathematical question uh for the ai whether he can get to that hex he's got to cross a minor river amongst three panzer division well two panzer divisions and a, a third of a panzer division we'll see if he can do that uh if they're isolated out here for one turn it's not a huge deal unless they get attacked as, as this all kind of closes down but i think i'm going to leave this the same i do think that we can close this next turn we've got enough force and strength up here we've also got more infantry that can come behind it we cleared a lot of this out I think that we can do it. Um, now, this is only going to be one wide up here. I've got them in a line. They're every 10 miles. We've got a uh, either a regiment or a division out here, mainly divisions. Uh, we, we tried to widen it a little bit You know, here. I could go one more hex uh, with this guy, maybe hold things off a little more. Do I do that? Uh... 
I really don't want him to get isolated, obviously. Uh, it goes without saying, but this would widen it a little bit more, although he's he's got, you know, a unit in here. I'd like to get rid of that as well, but attacking with a third of a division into something like that just seems like a recipe for disaster. This guy also has some movement points, but as you can see, you know, again, it would be a hasty attack. I hate to do hasty attacks at this point with the Panzers, uh, but hold on, hold on. Let me get back. Uh, hey, what's up, Paul Sanders? Uh, just let me know if you guys are still there. I would just want to make sure the stream's good after that little uh, early glitch. Um, okay, so I've just I've just been yapping my flap here for a little bit. Um, the only move I would contemplate is back here. We also maybe need to move our headquarters out just a little bit. Yeah, let's move that one so that all of those guys are in command. Uh, we could also attack out of this hex. As a matter of fact, I think I will. I think I'll attack there. This is an attack that's not across the river. So is that. Uh, this guards unit may try to get up and back around, but this is only a three strength. So let's attack right there. Okay, and we route that out. Now, eventually that, yes, that could have been trapped, uh, but now he's routed still into the pocket uh, and just trying to thin this out a little bit. There are a lot of routed units out here. We have routed stuff, a lot of things. Let's put it that way. Uh, this would be an attack across the river. We probably would succeed, but we probably don't need to do that. The only reason I might is because I have a gap here, but he's going to have to cross a river there and kind of, you know, why would he do this? I mean, really, you would start pulling this back as fast as you could, you would think, um, depending on what kind of intelligence they have. Um, we could try something here with this unit. This, what is this? Is that a division? Yeah, that's a rifle division. He can't move forward. This would just be a hasty attack. I've spread all of this out. Uh, I'm tempted to even move back even more with the Hungarians. 1-7 and 1-5. I'm going to do that. That way they're in the light woods at least. This unit, if it was going to attack, it would not have to go across the river. So let's at least put them in the light woods. This guy's in the swamp. Is that true? No, that's a clear hex. That's swamp. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, let's put him in the swamp. It's just more defensible. Now, he can't move, but he can move. Um, let's make sure all these guys are in command, for one thing. That's the full army. These are the headquarters for this guy. Headquarters there. I can actually move him over into the woods here. Uh, this headquarters is commanding no one. He's got all of his guys in. The Italian commander... I really should put all of the um, these in here. So this is Alpine, or Alpini, if you'd rather. Uh, let's put him in Alpini. There we go. And then this guy, who are you with? You're with 35th Italian. So there is 22nd Italian. He's got nothing under his command. There's second Italian. He's got nothing under his command. Uh, there is 35th Italian. Well, why don't we see which of these generals is best? We've got 545 five with a 5 on the ground there. We've got 454. Four. Okay, he's not the best. Uh, and then second core 4. Okay, so the guy back here in purple, 35th, is the best. Let's go ahead and move him up. I don't know, right there, and we'll put this guy in 35th. Oh, I just flipped him over. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, next turn, we'll do that, get that command. He's got nowhere to go. I really would rather get these guys further back, but I don't think we can. Uh, in retrospect, I probably just should have stayed in Lublin. These guys have movement points. They could get down here and at least get into the woods. Uh, let's do that. Who else? Oh, he's got these guys under command as well. 
Well, we've got other Hungarian commanders down here. Let's see. He's 9 of 9. He's 4 of 9. So that's 8th Hungarian. Let's put these guys in 8th Hungarian. Now, all of this looks like a mess down here, but ultimately we're just trying to hang on. Um, 8th Hungarian. There we go. Okay, now we've got all the commands there. All of this looks fine. We're trying to get more Italians, you know, up and around, uh, up this way. We've got the one cavalry unit. We'll get that up here. I think we can hold on here if we can get this closed next turn. Next turn. All right, let's look up here by Kiev because this is kind of a mess. Um... Oh, hey, what's up, James? You're in sunny California as well. Well, I am, but it's not so sunny, at least not right now. Uh, yeah, 10 a.m. on the weekends. That's when I try to do it anyway, uh, all other things being equal. We've got a lot of infantry that can move up here next turn, and I'm going to take a lot of this purple infantry and start moving it up here along the river uh and try to connect with the infantry coming down this way as well. Now, we should get the panzers closed. That's obviously priority number one. Now, the, these groups are going to start moving to the east, or at least I hope they do. We've actually got enough units to you know get up in here as well if we wanted to, or we can start to cross over the river. And why would we do that? Well, we want to eventually try to get out to Kharkov. Probably not going to get to Kursk. That's way too far away. But Kharkov, there's a chance we could get there before we have to start digging in. We've, we've also got this unit down here. We want to... Uh, it's a real question of which way to go here because... Okay, so I've got him across the river. I've got these guys right up here. Uh, they can't really attack into that. They're protecting here. This guy, he could, he needs to stay there. I don't want him to come around the back of this, certainly. Just making sure what I've got here as we come down this side of it. The, these guys in purple really don't have much in the way of movement points. We could try to attack there, but I don't really see the upside of that right now. Um, I could move him up here, but again, I think I want these guys to stay as they are. We can spread these out next time as they move up, certainly. Um, but this core is the question. Do I move them out this way? Do I move them up this way? Do I come down here to help? Now, we're going to need a lot of this on the line here, but we're also going to need some of it up here. Ooh, it's a good question. Um, I don't want there to be a gap there. Do I have enough down here? Well, only if I move these guys down there. Um, I hadn't really thought this through. Sorry, just give me one minute. Because I'm not sure which way I want to go with these guys. They, he can start to get across the river, and we could push out that way. But I'm afraid this mass, he's going to mass right here. We're going to need some defense against that, certainly. Um Or we could go up along the river this way. Just don't want there to be too big of a gap here. He can no, he can't move. He can't move. It's like this guy's gonna have to stay down here. What does this headquarters have? He's got eight of twelve. Let's do that. Let's put him in third. This guy in thirtieth core. All right. So he's permanently down here then. All right. So he's in thirtieth core. And let's move him right here so he's every other hex. And let's go ahead and attack. Is he in command? He is. Whoa, we got stuffed there. All right. Well, that's not perfect. Uh, this guy then will move up here to there. And we'll move their commander right behind them. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot further he could go. I just don't want him to get too far extended. But these guys could start moving up. But we just got to be careful. We don't want Kiev to get uncovered. 
in any fashion, but he can go one more north. He could go one more north, and I'll keep him, and eh, we'll put him right there. This guy could go north if we wanted to. That's a good zone of control, though. All right, the headquarters is right behind. We'll just push with this, so they've got a little something more to think about than, like, we're just all going to go right here. We could also push with the infantry. Hell, maybe we could go try to help take Chernigov with these guys eventually. We'll see. All right, moving down here. So we already moved this guy. I kind of wish I would have attacked into that now, but we didn't, so uh, let's not cry over it. Let's take this across this river. We'll move the headquarters up, all right, and we'll attack with both of these guys into that division, and we send that flying. 46-23 on the man loss, all right. Uh, next turn, we'll go after that. Now, if we're going continuing our every other hex, we'll go there, all right, and we've got a Soviet division there, but let's turn around. Actually, let's, let's attack this way. Uh, let's hit that. Hope he doesn't. Okay, he routed. Didn't lose that many men. I'm not sure where he flew off to. We didn't really see that, but okay. Uh, let's get across the river with this division, and we can actually go one more. Great. All right. And then if we're still maintaining every other hex, uh, we'll move this guy here. So this all looks fine. And then even though it's across the river, we'll attack right there there and try to push this back if we can we do 4175 on the route out there uh excellent all right well we'll double stack them at the bottom of this base here that's okay this guy is two away i don't know if he's strong enough to take anything out though uh we also have this situation down here. I may have to take one of these units, one of these infantry units. Oh, he can get all the way up to here. Interesting. And then he could come up here and we could deal with this with these guys. Well, let's do this first. What do we have here? It's a full rifle corps. So let's take actually all three. It may take all three divisions. Let's take all three divisions and hit that and see what we get. He routes. He's got 19,000 men in there. We take out 2815, and then this guy can continue on with a deliberate attack there. We route that. That's 813. So we're moving up. Uh, we've got to try to help these panzers out. They're completely isolated up here. Um, and we may have to do it with something like this unit because we're going to try to get them out this way. I think it's the best way. Now, he could go one here, but I want to get this out as well. So let's... He's got seven movement points. <coughs> Excuse me. This is really the key to get rid of, I think. Let's take this. Actually, let's move this up one more. We'll take this infantry these two units and try to blow that okay at least we scoot it back we didn't lose any panzers doing that he flew back over here so that's helpful um now then all right let's get the hungarian cavalry the hell out of here uh where do you go though my friend better check the chat make sure we're all good all right yeah it looks like okay it looks like we're in operational order here Anthony, I was thinking the same thing. I see what you're saying right here for that routed unit, if that's what you're talking about, but there's nothing in there. And I just know that because I remember a couple of turns when we went past this, there was actually nothing there. I should have taken that hex. I'll, I'll get back here with, I don't know, maybe the Hungarian cavalry or something uh, and take that hex. But he, no, he didn't go there or there uh, because I know there's nothing in those hexes. And I may take... Hungarian cavalry and just come over here and take those hexes back. Yeah, he couldn't get in there this time. Um, but you know, to get rid of that stuff, I even could come back with this if I wanted to. If I wanted to get crazy, but I'm not that wild. Um, all right, so Hungarian cavalry's out. I'm not sure what we're going to use it for, but we've got this little regiment, or or div, you know third of a division size and we're going to bring his other groups around here and put this back together all right so now we got a panzer division again 
Now we've got this motorized that's out here kind of by itself. We could move both of these down here. Now the problem is, is this would still be isolated. Now we've got what appear to be fairly weak units out here. I could try to do a hasty attack with this. Uh, I could try to link them up this way. Well, let's continue moving our ground units first. Um, he can't go that way. This guy could get all the way up here and take this hex. And I could start shoving down here to at least trap these guys. All right, I'm going to hold on to those movement points for a second because I already know that I need to go here. We don't know what that is. This is a rifle division. No, it's a full rifle corps, and it's a guard's rifle corps. Now, it's indicating that it's not that strong. I'm not sure if I believe that, though. Um, hmm. I don't want this guy to have to attack across the river. Uh, but I don't know that I have enough movement points to get to that. He could come here and attack into that. What is this? A rifle division? That's a rifle division. Now, it looks like these guys, their freight situation is not that great, at least. Let's try... Hmm, I'm at a little bit of a loss here of how I want to proceed with this. Two of four... He would not have enough to attack there. I really want him to come up here, probably. Um, we may need him in that hex, because I can go here, here. That's kind of a tough decision. All right, let's try to uh, attack here. We don't know what this is, but let's give it a shot. Okay, we move that back, 702 to 37. Uh, that's a better result than I was even hoping for. Uh, so, you know, continuing to try to get up to the river. Now, we got this situation. It's a question of how do we go about going after it. I think what I'll do is attack with the Slovox this way. How many movement points does Viking have? I want to use Viking for something else that we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, let's have the Slovox try to hit here and get this out of the way if we can. All right, let's see. All right, excellent. That that helps. So he retreats. Now, he's got a lot of stuff across the river here, including what appears to be a tank core. That's first tank core right there. So we got to be really careful. Um, I'm going to move the Slovox there. And I think what we're going to do is try to crush down this way if we can and make, you know, link up this little pocket and try to also get him out. Um, uh, maybe I take this, these two Panzer divisions and hit right here. Uh, it's only the one Panzer division. He can't get into the battle or can he? Yeah, he can, but he can't. What the heck? Man, these guys got in a really tough... This was the group that was in Cherkasi. They got in a really tough spot out here. Um, I'm going to scoot him this way for a moment. And I'm going to try... A, is he in command? Five of five. I'm going to try a deliberate attack there and see what happens. Oh, fantastic. Okay, that helps. Uh, all right, so he goes, and now, man, I, I hate to do a deliberate attack with a unit that has been isolated. Why don't I do this then? Why don't we go here and try a hasty attack on that? Ooh. That's helpful as well. All right, well, we're we're eventually wearing down this pocket probably better than I expected. Uh, that's for certain. This guy, well, he can get all the way across the river if we want to get really wild with it. Um, I just don't want to throw away panzers if we don't have to. 
We've also got this over here that could move. His tank core is probably going to get down here no matter what we do, I think. Um, he could also come up this way. Can he go one more? No. He can go this way, though. <sighs> he could go here, but if I eliminate this, he can get all the way out. Five, two. He would get stuck here, potentially, if I don't just take him out now. Um... He could also just come back this way and get the hell out of there. Then I could just move him there, this division there. He's linked back up for the time being anyway, unless they get, well, they can't, well, they could link right there. Uh, where is that unit that has, still has movement points down here? It's this one. Let's go right there. Okay. We'll move him down. Now he's linked up. They shouldn't be able to get through that. Um, I'm actually going to get this Panzer out of there this guy is in a little bit of a tough spot uh this panzer division can go a long ways if we need him to he could come up here and like hold this or he could come around here and hold that what do i have here i've got viking i've got slovox and i've got a commander uh, that's not great Uh, the Slovaks can't move. Viking can't really move. Okay, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move Viking out of here because we're going to do something with Viking here in a minute. I'm going to move that Panzer right on top of him. Let's move the headquarters out, uh, and we're going to try to block anything too crazy from happening. Now, let's take these two infantry. I mean, hell, I could even throw the Panzer Division in it and probably still have enough to get back there. Let's do it and see if we can take out this core. Uh, so we've got three. Let's hit that. Uh, we lost eight tanks. Did he? Oh, he did a retreat. Okay, that was that was okay. 1710, we really weakened that, certainly. And now, please tell me the Panzer has enough to get back, and he does. Okay, excellent. Now then, I also want to put one of let's put this panzer battalion in with him we'll give him some reinforcements now he's up to 186 he's facing a lot out here so let's build him up all right so these guys should be okay now we've gotten this out of here the infantry these guys are still kind of in bad shape um hopefully we can you know push with infantry to do even more damage we'll push him up one more hex this guy will eventually try to get back up here. I think we can hold this zone of control. Now, I moved this motorized out here for a reason, and I'll show you here in a second. Uh, when I was looking at the map earlier, what I want to do. We're still in Krivi Rogue down here. Um, where did that... Uh, we already moved him and used him, and then we've got the one in Proskurov that's a super depot. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I'll go back and look at that, Anthony. Um, either replay that and see if I can see where it went, or uh, just next turn I'll bring something down here. If you're talking about any of this over here, uh, also I will move this headquarters just in case he is out, out in this way. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it's weird. It's showing these as Soviet hexes. Uh, we're even right next to this one. He's in kind of bad shape, but I, I'll go clean this up with this Hungarian cavalry next time. Or if he's down here, you know, let's just hope like hell he doesn't get to some rail. Um, I don't think I have anything else. I could move one of maybe eh, they can't get there. I do have a Hungarian armor up here somewhere that's got a lot of this guy. He's got a lot of movement points. Yeah, it's not letting me get into these hexes, so it's possible he has something over here. Uh, it could also just be that because it's still their hex, it costs more movement points. And I'm kind of at the end of my rope by the time I get here, two or one. And so I, I couldn't move into that just because he controls it. Um, 
Let's go there. I'll actually just... Uh, let's move the headquarters right there. Okay, he's still in command. Uh, this headquarters has all of his guys. This guy is now in command, but this, this should be strong and keep them from coming this way or coming this way, really. Uh, this is double stacked. That's good. I've got a full motorized over here. This is one of the ones that I brought. I say one of the ones. It's the only one that I brought from over there. Uh, I may just need to put him in with these guys at this point. Um, okay, they're out of command. So let's move. Now they've got stuff here as well. They could get to like here. But that wouldn't be in command. I think I'd rather have three, these three in command than otherwise. Let's move him over here. Stack him with the infantry. Now they're all in command. These guys are out for a turn, but I could put them in with him. And I could also eventually give this motorized to, what is this, 14th under Nairing. Uh, yeah, let's put this in 14th for a moment anyway. Just so they get enough stuff this time and also get support units if they get attacked uh 14th panzer okay they're both in then into that weird light orange okay that all looks good um now then now he who is that that is fredo pico okay he's pretty good uh nairing is good so let's put this other slovakian unit in 14th as well hold on let's make sure 14th he's yeah he's only got eight okay uh so now they're all with him uh Fredro pico can actually go do something else he doesn't have any units right now we'll put him down by Krivy rogue uh just to hang out and eh, we'll just put him in town um okay moving along this line I was tempted to try and attack here, but I don't have enough movement points. This guy's going to probably certainly get isolated. we got to try to get him out of here somehow. Uh, but it's the Slovaks. I mean, no offense, but, you know, if we lose the Slovakian, uh, that's that out of all this stuff, that would probably be the one you would pick. Uh, we've got plenty of infantry strength along here, although he's massing at the river. All of these guys are in command. That all looks good. Now, as we come around D-Town, so we're not going to move any of these. They're in good fort levels. I wish he was in a two. He's got to be getting close. He is 20% to a fort level two. Okay. We could try some exploratory attacks here, especially like something like this cavalry unit. Um, but I hate to weaken this. Let's turn on our defensiveness. He's showing an X. He's in good shape. It's probably the strongest unit we have along here. Let's just go ahead and attack that cavalry. Yeah, we didn't even lose a man. Uh, they lost 547 there, so that's that's worth it, right? Um, but let's go down here, because the reason I saved Viking... Now, I could put him right up here and block somewhat, anyway, this retreat back here. But I think what I'd rather do is maybe... Uh, is that true? Is that really what I'd rather do? What does he have here? Yeah, he's got a full rifle corps here, a rifle division and a cavalry division. So the two options are to either go here and try to block that. Well, I could even launch an attack here, I guess, because um, Viking is a very strong motorized unit. The other option is to start moving out here. Although usually with this AI, AI you don't want to tip your hand once you start going, you want to go because he will mass after your first movement with any kind of motorized. Uh, let's take this. Eh, let's take this. Let's move to that 8 of 10, our stronger one, and hit this airborne unit. Now, it's in a fort level 3, but we do move it out. 994. Wow, we get 57 planes bagged there. Now, let's take this unit along with this and hit this airborne okay that also blows out and we've only got one delay point for each right there um now we want these to be three wide i i, I hate when you guys yell at me when i don't make them three wide he can't move forward 
this guy can come there, but he doesn't have a whole lot left if he does. Yeah, nothing to be done there. So now Viking could get through, and we could start to work on this. But now that I look at this again, I think I'm going to save this for next turn because we'll have these panzers then that can come down this way. So I am going to move Viking back here. And just to see what we're dealing with here, I'm going to launch an attack there against the odds. All right, 308, 73. We, only, we lost 73 men uh, in somewhat of an exploratory attack. But I want to block this in here. And next turn, when I have all of the infantry I can bring up here, try to take out that rifle core. Now, he's got a tank core that's coming right here as well. But this also maybe helps save save the Slovaks. So, all right, that, that, uh, that's all fine. Um, this guy, no real movement there. We could try to attack here, but I pr think I want to try to attack this way. Now he's coming across the river. Oh, he can't even, he doesn't even have enough movement of points to launch that. Let's hit that. Oh, we do knock that back. 1359, 20 on the gun. So this is starting to disintegrate a little bit and we haven't tipped our hand yet, meaning the AI is not going to necessarily mass here. He may bring forces back up here, uh, but then next turn we'll just come straight across here and I'm going to go try to go straight for this port and cut off everything down here we can. Then we can move the infantry up and start going towards Stalino Rostov. That's that's the idea. Uh, I'm gonna leave him behind the river just because this looks like a fairly strong unit. These guys are already across the major river. Um, this little unit, he can get across the river. I'm not sure I want him to though. Let's go there with him. I think this is okay. That's probably strong enough to hold. Let's try to attack across the river here and see if we get anything. Now, usually if you're attacking across the river like this, you definitely want to do it with two divisions. I'm going to move this division across the river. I'm going to hit there. Do we get anything? Eh, no, nah, we technically lose that battle. We only lost 108 men, but uh, that didn't that didn't play the way we wanted it to. All right, let's take these two, these three, but I don't want to use the Romanians. Let's take the two German divisions here and attack there. All right, we just kind of disintegrate that. 864, and we get him out of the way. Now, I've got this Romanian cavalry that we could try to exploit gaps with, such as this one. Um... Well, let's wait and see if we can get rid of this. So we've got this 4 of 11. Now, I know that this has moved through here, but we can contain this. He's not going far. There's the Dnieper. Um, let's hit there. All right, we scoot that back. Okay, well, we could almost get a little, little more limited move here. Let's move this Romanian armor. Okay, that's a strong unit. That's good to know, but I think we can get him down through this gap. What about this Romanian cavalry? I mean, they're going to get blasted, but we give him a lot more to think about. Uh, that's across the river. He could get right there. All right, well, let's try to remove this unit with these two. Ah, uh, good. Okay, so he routes. That's a thousand. Now this looks like a rifle core. It is a rifle core. Uh, that's not ideal. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I guess I'd rather him be running here than down <clears throat> here. Um, Well, John, the reason we're running these attacks is because if you get a thousand losses compared to 62 men, you may as well take them because you don't know if you're going to be able to form the pocket. That's why. I mean, if he's going to give you an attack like that one that I did there, where he takes 600 in losses and we lose 36 men, take it. I mean, why would you not take it when you're getting 10 or 15 to 1 losses? Now, eventually, yes, we may be able to form this pocket, but that's not guaranteed. 
the 12 to 1 losses is guaranteed, and that's why I'm doing a tax there. This has more to do with the fact we're going to have to get across the river sooner rather than later. It's July 19th. I mean, we've got to start moving. If we're going to take Stellino, you know, I can sit here and wait for the perfect pocket to form, which is going to take another three turns, or I can start moving out here and at least doing something because what happens if this pocket never forms? Let's say he stops this. Then, well, I mean, we're never, we're, we won't even be up here to this river by the time we have to start digging in. So that's why I'm doing attacks I wouldn't do in May if we were out here trying to get a perfect pocket and all of that. We've got to be moving. We've got to constantly be trying to move forward. Now, that doesn't mean you can't try to form a pocket. Uh, obviously, we're doing that all over the map. Uh, this one didn't go as well as the first one did, although it looks like we're still going to get not bag them surrendering. You know, I'm not going to let the perfect be the enemy of the good, where I'm only going to move forward if we have perfect pockets somewhere. We've got to keep moving forward, whether it be north, east, or otherwise. So we've got to be moving forward. It's July 19th. Um, all right, so let's... He can move forward as well. Let's do that. Now, that's a strong unit, but uh, we've got to, like I said, I mean, we've got to be moving forward at all times at this point. Uh, we can move the cavalry and stack it there. Now, they may get blown, <clears throat> but, you know, it's also possible somehow we can arrange it, whether we hit this unit next time or something, to where they could get down here and even cut, you know, this rail, uh, which would leave all of this out of freight um okay we've got romanians back here we've got more cavalry here now i don't want to be attacking with the romanians obviously but i will attack with these guys because that's a cavalry unit we knock them back 304 to 245 no i mean it's the romanians i'm gonna leave the rest of this alone though just because i mean they're not really strong enough i could move this around here again uh, but usually they just pinch that I could also, yeah, I can't actually get over there. You got to go over the ferry to get over here, unless you're doing it with cavalry, at least this turn. Um, these guys will stay here. Let's just put him, I'll leave him there just in case he tries to shoot the gap there. Uh, here, let's move these guys here. He may try to move across the river. He's also got you know, this rifle corps out here. So I could put these guys back over here, but you know, how far realistically can he get? I almost hope he moves over here. We'll just keep going this way. He'll be totally isolated. Um, nothing to move here. This guy I'm going to eventually take down to Sevastopol. That's fine. This unit, as we look out here by the Kerch, this has opened up a little bit. I'm going to try to get to Krasnodar if I can. Um, Let's move this headquarters. Oh, he can't go by himself. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. The headquarters, because he can't sneak over the ferry by himself. I think he's got to move with a unit, if I'm remembering that properly. All right, so I'm going to move the headquarters back. I'm going to take this unit, and next turn... We're going to have this all recombine into a division. Um, well, let's get this guy moving down the road. I actually think I want this one to be like a blocking force. At, well, is that the right way to put it? I want him to come down and deal with that, uh, with this guards unit. Um, so I'm going to put him there. This guy, we're going to just get moving. I mean, if the, he'll if he's going to give me Krasnodar, we'll take it. Uh, I, we'll see. I wish I had the Romanian mountain divisions down here now. I had no idea I was going to be able to get across here, so that's kind of why I don't. Uh, let's move that there. Let's move him there. Shit, he's just out of command. Well, that's all right. We're going to attack there anyway. We push that back. Uh, the Romanians gone wild down here. Um, let's hit this amphib unit. Does he move him? Yeah. Oh, he just actually surrendered. Cool. Let's go take this. We could even start moving air forces down here a little bit. 
Oh, uh, God, I hope I could just take Krasnodar with Romanians. Was not expecting that. Um, well, oh, I see what you're saying. As far as the headquarters, yeah, it's because we don't control that hex. You're right. You're right. So, you know, it's a Jason hex. The headquarters can't step out here unless he's got uh you know infantry as well with him because of that hex right there that's a nice looking airport we got level two airports all around here i don't know why the ai has just essentially left this wide open there's got to be more coming um we don't see it right now though all right let's go around and look at some of our units i think for the most part that's what i want to move but let's turn the turn if we can Heck, I don't know. It's Sunday. We may even play a little longer. Um, nothing there. These guys are beat down. I've already got him on refit, but it doesn't matter if you're next to the Soviets. Uh, he's on ready. Again, I've got some guys on refit out here, but they're not going to refit. Uh, but I'll just keep them on that. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to hurt anything, I don't think. Um, okay, I've got these guys lined up the way I want. This is concerning. I mean, if this rifle corps starts moving this way, it could be a little more concerning. But I think we're going to be able to get around the back of him somehow. And then all of these guys are going to be coming out here to try to form that pocket anyway. Um, but yeah, John brought up a good point. You know, why are, why would it, why attack along here? Uh, and I, you know, if we had more time, uh, certainly I wouldn't. I'd wait for the pocket to form, but. We're just we're running out of time. It's July 19th, so we've got really until the end of September. And this time we're going to start digging in the minute it starts to rain. Wherever we are, we've got to be up and along rivers. And so if I could take Krasnodar, that's 16 points. That gets us over where we need to be for the shift change. Uh, I would also like to take Stellino and maybe be on the river. Maybe not the major river, right? Not up here. Uh, but at least on minor river for most of it. So he's got to cross. And then we could bring it straight to D-Town. So like Stellino to D-Town and then along the river here for the winter. Uh, and then try to take, you know, the river here. Now we're going to try to push with our infantry after this pocket. But I'm not sure how far we can get. Uh We'll see. Uh, okay, so infantry along here. I don't think any of these guys probably need to be on refit. And the ones that do are probably right next to the Soviets anyway. Uh, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't come after D-Town or Z-Town harder. These are actually two fairly strong units. Let's look at defensiveness since we're not really looking to move. That's concerning. This right here is really concerning. I'm almost tempted to move these Germans back, but I want to keep that level two fort. He's probably going to get blown out of here, though, uh, and we've got to just move quickly to try to get around behind him somehow. Um, this all looks fine. We'll see how much he attacks into this. You know, Panzer divisions, motorized divisions, but he's got cores up here and several of them. Uh, this actually turned out better than I thought it might. Um, I was very worried about it, to be honest, because I just thought these guys may get trapped up there. We don't want to leave any holes in the line. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, we want these to all be in a line. If they move any of this, they can isolate something or several things, uh, up and around here. This all looks good. Yeah, we're moving infantry up here. We'll see. We may just turn them east at some point. I mean, if we were going to form our line right on the river, though, we would do it, you know, we could do it right down here uh, on the Desna around the Dnieper. Something to think about. Uh, I think we can close this next time. We'll see. We'll see. Around here, the line is, you know, holding on. That's uh, the best you can say about it, certainly. Uh, defensive. <laughs> yeah, look at this mess. That's not a line, boys. That's, uh, I don't know what that is. It looks like the old uh, Roman staggered formation. Uh, I got the Triari in the back. <whistles> yeah, our Austerlitz plan worked. We let him through the center, and now we're going to close the door behind him. Sure. Um... 
This all looks good. Okay, I think we're good. I'm just going to turn the turn. We're all right. We're going to look at depots uh, through the next turn. And so let's exit without depot management. Yeah, CJ, I'm going to try to do that with the Romanians next time and form a smaller pocket down there just because that Soviet Corps or two of them that are out there are starting to cause a little problems. Um, little problem. Yeah, little problem. Uh, may, let's not let it turn into a big problem. We've seen that in the swamp. I tried to tell people the swamp was going to be a problem. But again, it was my Austerlitz plan. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> uh, BR, that may have been a good idea. I don't want Vikings certainly to get isolated uh, because it's such a good, powerful unit. I mean, it's so strong, and it'll have a lot of movement points next time to really be what leads the way to for try to form that other pocket to, uh, I guess, to the east. Well, kind of to the south and to the east. Um, but yeah, no, I, I hear you. I looked at that and I thought, do I keep going with Viking and link those up? Uh, but I, I think I wanted to keep it as close or as far east as I could for the next turn. Eh, you know, who knows if that's the right answer. At least that was my answer. I don't know if it's right or not. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, Soviet logistics phase is done. See if he runs any air. We have just ripped up his air force when just running nothing but ground support. It's amazing how many plans. I mean, we're almost to parity with the Soviets in the air now, which is kind of crazy in 1942. Um, you know, the more I play this, the more I think, really, all you need to do with the Luftwaffe is make sure you've got the fighters close to the front and run ground support. I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe air superiority. I haven't tested air superiority. Maybe you could even shoot down more planes if you're running air superiority. As you can see, it looks like he's running recon here. Maybe, maybe bombing some towns. The AI, like, I said this last time, the AI likes to bomb towns for whatever reason sometimes. And just a random town from here and there. Or, you know, sometimes Minsk, sometimes Peskov, something like that. Oh, uh, boy. Let's see what's going to happen. I can't wait. Moving isolated units. Organizing his fronts. Reaction attacks. You never want to see that. Or assaulting enemy weak points. That means you've done something wrong. Okay, we got neither of those. Here come the front attacks. All right, he tried to move through this gap here, but he's moving into, well, I guess there's a few units up here he could link up with and get them out of isolation. But he's moving into a pretty bad area considering we have so much infantry coming this way. All right, so he's attacking into the salient, uh, and he takes a beating there. Now, he almost pushed us back, but he lost 2,200 men there. Um, he's again attacking into the salient. This is that motorized regiment, and we hold him off. 368 to 6. Okay. Oh, wow. He's trying to make a little bread. we got to watch this. Uh, he loses 573. I didn't see how much we lost, uh, but that's bold. This is part of Second Army that we just moved down here. Now, there's no real where, place for him to go. Uh, he hits into part of a Panzer division. We lose three Panzers, but they don't move. That time we lose 25, and he gets knocked back. But he gets knocked back into his other regiments. Now, this is what we talked about, what we were kind of worried. We, I was kind of worried about. These guys were out on an island. We end up losing quite a few tanks, but that's okay. He's not isolated now. I say that's okay. I mean, it's not ideal, obviously. Uh, oh, interesting. He's trying to push through up here by Mogilev. Looks like he's taken a few hexes up here. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to come look at that. Looks like he's got a rifle corps out here. He takes 10 to 1 loss, or 8 to 1 losses, let's say, attacking into that division. 
Looks like that's a guard's core. We may have to back up behind the river again. This is outside of Smolensk. So there's Vileki Luki. Here's Smolensk. He takes a beating there, but he's got a lot of units up here. Uh, Theobald Lieb says, no, thank you. You're not coming this way. Uh, like Gandalf, he's like, you shall not pass. Uh, 724 to 118, that's my guy. That's my guy. I may just put him in charge of OKH. I, li I, I love the monocle. Um, all right, attacking down into Vileki Luki. He's got a lot of strength here, too. He's starting to get offensive. He's taking a lot of losses, but he's he's got a lot of forces out here. Now, we're double stacked there, luckily. I did, hadn't moved that down yet, but he's got a lot of strength down here by Smolensk. Interesting. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad the AI is getting more aggressive here. Hopefully, we can nutcracker that group. Now, that's a rifle core plus, but we hold our ground. This is northwest of Vel Vileki Luki, southeast of Peskov, and again... We hold on again. Now he's attacking the Finns up here. I think I may have to move the German unit back in between the two Finnish units and move this down, because I don't know that he's going to hold against a rifle corps. Okay, we take a big loss there. So that Panzer division lost 66 Panzers in that attack. Well, he was isolated last turn, and then the motorized, that's the uh, Slovaks. The Slovaks get blown out of there. Now he's attacking into Viking. That's not going anywhere. But he's linked this back up, and we did take a hard loss there. Now this is into infantry. He takes a big loss, so I'm going to pause it for a second. A lot's happened. So we had that Panzer Division right there that had been isolated. We moved it down, but we didn't move anything else on top of it. Looking back, I should have taken that motorized unit and stacked it with the previously isolated unit. We lose 66 Panzers there. Uh, that's the biggest loss we've taken in quite some time. Uh, that one hurts a little bit, but you know we should be able to get this out now. And now he's stacked with the rest of that. Again, I should have moved the motorized there and stacked with it and left the fresh Panzer Division by itself. All right. This infantry is kind of on its own, right? I mean, it's holding this bridgehead, or it has been what a potential bridgehead for turn after turn after turn. He's now coming after it, but man, uh, he takes 2,100 in losses. You know, I'm I'm upset about losing 66 Panzers. Of course, he loses 50 or 60 Panzers all the time. Uh, but that's the uh, upside of playing the Soviets. You can take those kind of losses, right? With the Germans, you can't. Uh, that, that's, that's a big loss. I mean, it's not like we can't recover from it, but we can't let that happen too many times, certainly. Um, okay, let's let it go on. So he's attacking into this area. Now he's going to attack that whole stack with 50,000. He's got a, what he thinks is surrounded. Uh, we only lose four tanks because we have the fresh Panzer Division in there. We have a motorized, so two Panzer Divisions and a motorized division. You can see all of the support units. That's why I brought that headquarters around here to make sure they were in command because they got support units on the defense. It's probably what made the difference. We did lose 12 uh, planes there. He loses 1,344 men, 27 guns, 42 AFVs, uh, but that's nothing to the Soviets, obviously. We lose 4-1 and only 91 men. So, I mean, that's a nominally a big win for us, you know, uh, on the stats, but the Soviets can absorb that kind of loss. Now he's going to hit this infantry div division. We did have Stugs in there, and we hold that off. So he's not able to move that, which is important because we don't want that to get isolated. Oh, okay. He hits our Panzer. No, that was motorized SS that was out here. Now he hit the foremost Panzer regiment and gets knocked. Now this is where we're trying to form the pocket. He's got a big, you know, a fairly strong unit here. That guards core we didn't hit did move around here. Uh, where the heck is this? 
oh, this is down by, um, so that's the pocket we're trying to form. This is down around the Minsk area. I mean, I, I, I don't, can't, I think Minsk is, well, Minsk is up here. Uh, Breslitovsk, there we go. I was trying to orient myself. Breslitovsk, he loses 1867 and 28. We lose 172 men. And this is, now there's, you know, Minsk, and there's Minsk, and there's the pocket. He's trying to attack up this way. That's fine by us. Uh, okay, now the Italians start to give way. <laughs> Not by choice. Uh, 2,600 Italians we lose there. And he's moved a, an armored unit through here, through a gap just outside of Warsaw. Okay, now he hit a motorized division. He took big losses, but we had to scoop back here uh, at the, this is in the southern part of the salient, or in the southern uh, front. There's Kiev. Wow, the action's happening fast and furious. Okay, he's coming across here. This is D-Town. This is, you know, where we're trying to hold on and get these guys out. He's attacking across the river everywhere along this line now. I mean, he's taking losses. He's taking, in some cases, you know, 8-1, to 7-1 to one losses, but it's all about shoving us back wow he had attacked right into d-town he loses a lot of men um we got to watch that though we've only got one division there if it gets too weak we've got to replace it or double stack it this is just south of z-town he tries to attack across the river we'll let him do that all day certainly Now he's attacking Romanians, and they hold strong. <laughs> Look at that, 1.8 to 1. But the Romanians messed them up a little bit. We've got three Romanian divisions. We lose 660. He loses 813 and 41 guns and five AFVs. These Romanians standing tall. I love it. Ah, <laughs> I spoke too soon. Now we he comes back again. We lose a thousand. Now they didn't get routed, so that's good. Oh, let's pause this. That's that rifle corps that's down here in the south. He did attack into us. That just goes to show you how good German divisions are. Uh, wow, we haven't talked about Ringel. He's a new commander down here. Uh, that's a full Soviet rifle corps. It's attacking not a very strong German division. Uh, and we, you know, dish out uh, three or four to one losses and hold on. Love it. That's good. That's very helpful. Uh, and also that he's not moving back here and he's just got a cavalry unit here. He's coming through with armor, but that's why I moved this Romanians, these Romanians here, but they may just go right here, depending on how he forms his line. And that's it. That was the end of the attacks. All in all, that was very positive for us. Um, other than that panzer loss, and that was maybe a little hubris on my part to go take Cherkasi. We didn't need to go take Cherkasi, certainly not with armor. And we end up paying for it. Um, but all in all, I'll take that. I'll take that. Push to... Oh, I just I just missed that comment. Hold on. Oh, Fedrovko. Okay, I'll, we'll go take a look at Fedrovko here in a second. David, when you say they don't seem too concerned yet, are you talking about the Soviets or me? <laughs> yeah, they're they're they're. <laughs> I'm concerned. Um. Gosh, darn it. I want to play through to see if we can make this pocket. All right. He's running his freight missions there. And off we go. It is our logistics turn. It is now July 26, 1942. It is turn 58. We've got approximately two months to get done what we need to get done. 
uh, I think it's turn 68, which is 10 turns, but really we probably are going to have to start digging in in about eight turns, eight or nine, um, to get sufficiently dug in for the winter of 42. We're going to go look at all of our charts and maps and everything else here in a second. Weather. I definitely want to come take Gomel this time around, and maybe we'll start our line, and we'll try to put it uh, up here on this river. I mean, look, I'd love to run it all the way out to the Desna. I'm not sure if we can get there. Part That's part of the reason we've got to, um, I think, get to Salino, maybe Krasnodar, so he doesn't flip the uh, initiative on us. I think I said we need to get to 540 points, and right now we're at 520 or 525. Right, we'll go look. All right, there's our logistics phase. We are going to have to go back through and talk about the depots here at some point. Let's look and see what happened last time. We lost 41,000 men last time, 638 guns, 157 AFVs. Okay, we also lost 175 planes. On the map, we end up, for the first time in a little while, losing some men. 28,000, well, I guess we did last turn, too. We had been rising, but now we're starting to get eroded a little bit. We did add guns back to the map, so the folk back in Germany are cranking out some artillery. Uh, we lost 68 AFVs, so we added about 100 back into the pool, you know, out of the pool onto the map, uh, and we added a lot of planes, actually. Uh, 220 planes to the map. Awesome. It looks like maybe we transferred something out of the theater boxes onto the map uh or into yeah so anyway great uh oh those were those fighter bombers i transferred all right uh that makes sense uh i was like where did all those come from now some of those are replacements because the fighter bombers i think were only two groupas that was 80 planes all right and we ended up adding like almost what 400 planes from uh, production it looks like the soviets last time uh they end up negative 69,000 on the map this turn negative 500 or so guns they do add back afvs they're starting to crank those out and they subtract 262 aircraft logistics um we're about 20,000 light when it comes to trucks in our units that's because we have 109,000 trucks under repair which seems like a crazy number. Uh, 10,000 trucks in the pool. You know, we're 20,000 light. We also have 44,000 trucks that just happen to be at the depots when the turn turns. Uh, when it comes to uh, tons received of supply, we're about 17,000 tons light overall. Um, I think that's actually done in thousands though, right? So it's like 170,000. Uh, tons received 22,000. This is of uh, armaments. Men received, we got 109,000 men that moved along the rail in the logistics phase. Tons differential were light uh, quite a bit. Uh, we've got 136 units that are under strength. You know, out of 244 total units on the map, <laughs> that's over half. Uh, 26 that are unready, which is really the, the real red flashing light, right? Uh, initiative, we've got 520 points. Our Axis high mark was 599. Uh, you can't drop more than 10% below your high water mark when they do a check. So they're going to check again October 1st. You know, 10% of this is approximately 60 points. Uh, we'll say it's 59 points, really. We've got to get to 540, so the initiative does not change this way. All right. Let's look at overall losses. Uh, we're now at 2.17 million, 32,000 guns, 5, 5, 5, 5 AFVs. Uh, okay. Okay. Glad that's not all sixes. I'm a, I'm a very, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to jinx like that. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, the Soviets are about to go over 7 million, 6.94 million men, 107,000 guns, 28,000 AFVs. They've had 2.1 million men killed. We've taken almost 3 million prisoners and they've almost had another 2 million disabled. And the air losses, uh, total losses for the Soviets, 25,000. We've lost 6,000. So it's about four to one in the air. Let's look at the weather. 
Uh, the weather on the ground, it looks all clear in the fighting area. All right, we can see a couple of weather fronts moving around. Weather in the air, it's only raining up here in the north at the start of the turn. By the end of the turn, that starts to extend down by Moscow out in that area. Uh, we're not really fighting there. It's certainly not near Smolensk or Vitebsk uh, in the center. News events, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, July 26, 1942, Dateline, uh, Soviet partisans are active. Well, we already knew that. Okay, let's look at our graphs. So 520, as I keep saying, 540, we've got to get there by October 1st. Let's look at manpower losses, uh, 236. He also, one of these turns had like 250, 272, 211. We're keeping him over 200,000, turn after turn after turn. If we could do that for 10 more turns till the rains come, that would be another 2 million men. Uh, if we can get that big pocket, we may be able to do that. Gun losses. He's losing about 3,000 guns a turn. Uh, it's finally started to eat into his total guns. Uh, he's having a hard time replacing them as fast as we're destroying them. AFV losses. You know, I'm all upset because we lost 157 AFVs. I mean, he's losing five, 600, 1,000 a turn, uh, but it's the Soviets. doesn't really matter. He's lost a lot of aircraft since we went on the offensive. Uh, let's do map men. We continue to bring him down 4.8. We're at 3.9. Uh, now we've started to turn over a little bit as we've gotten more offensive and started trying to move forward, but we're nicely bringing him down. Let's look at the manpower pool. This is great. We want to keep him down here. These are his replacement men. As you can see, our pool's going up. I mean, we're up to 500,000 in our pool uh, for reinforcements. So, you know, if you if you look at the pool, I mean, we're only about a half a million men behind him uh, to what we could bring, our, bring to bear totally. Um, okay, let's look at map guns and we've really brought him down here he obviously at his peak had well let's just look back here 30,000 gun advantage uh we've brought that down to about eight or 16,000 guns a little less than that actually 15.5 as we keep destroying guns um map afvs well i mean look you saw how many we've been destroying he's kind of just stayed stable if not actually slightly rising i mean we've only he's got a three three you know three hundred and thirty thousand three point three thousand three thousand three hundred uh afv advantage on us it's just crazy uh, he's cranking these out. Now, some of these are pre, you know, they're crappy little tanks, but, it, you know, some of these aren't. Uh, the T-34s are going to start showing up. Map aircraft, we're almost to parity on the map. I love it. All right. All right, that's it for the charts. Uh, is there something else you guys want to look at here? Uh... Ah, <sighs> this is the more most important turn of the war, CJ, uh, barring maybe the first turn. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. Um, okay, uh, I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to see. I think I'm going to call this a turn. You know, I'm going to call this an episode here. This is a great stopping point. Obviously, I'll probably do the air just offline so we can jump right back into it next time. I know sometimes people want to see the big picture. Let's look at the big picture. Uh, this is, you know, obviously where he's pushed down here. It oh, let's just go look around the map very quickly. Um, we do have a gap here, a potential gap here to do try to do a small little pocket here. He's got armor through this gap. You know, he's got a full rifle core there, so we got to watch that. Out here by D Town, or I'm sorry, Z Town. Uh, he actually filled this with stronger, but airborne unit, airborne unit, this nine of nine may be hard to move. Now this was a motorized division that got ripped here. got routed. Ouch. Okay. 
uh, and we've got to try to get out of here. Now you see he's moved a rifle corps over here. Now we can move, or we've got infantry that we can do here, or we could just try to come out the backside here, which might be the better idea. Um, they did get freight. Now he has gotten really worn down. This Panzer division only has 25 Panzers left. So actually, let's just not forget. Let's put that on refit right at the start. Um, yeah, I'd love to come through here. It looks like he's abandoned this, but I'm sure he's got more behind here. But we could really go for a big one <laughs> if we came around here in a big pocket in the south. I don't know. That might be getting a little too adventurous. Uh, we'll try to push the infantry up to the river here. Uh, but he's got a lot of units out here, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, this rifle corps came over here to try to block these panzers getting out this has turned into kind of a worrying situation i don't like that uh up here how do you move into the pocket uh well wow it looks like we'll see i mean we can't see any anthony maybe we'll run some recon what do you think about this now these guys got stranded out here a little bit oh let's turn on movement points no they didn't he's they've got movement points all right and this guy should be able to connect i think we can connect um uh, his defensiveness out here now this looks really weak straight up to that road now these are heavy woods they're hard to get through so actually we're probably going to come up this way through the light woods um that's no arden forest i'll tell you that uh these guys are going to come this way light forest they got to get across the river uh or maybe we just attach right there we'll see We'll see. Um, but backing up and looking at it, I mean, we've got this whole mess around Warsaw. He has broken through with armor here, but we can start to scoot, I think. And uh, I think we can cover that. We'll see. Uh, up here, this all looks fine. He did get through here with some armor, which is kind of... I, you know, we were every other hex, but he busted through here. You don't see that often. We should easily be able to stave that off as we move infantry. I mean, we've got a lot of infantry out here. We've already cleared the pocket. These guys could move all the way down here. We're going to go after strongly after Gomel. We're also going to try to potentially do a secondary little pocket with these guys as we get armor out this way. We'll see. Uh, this is starting to get a little more interesting. He's finally starting to push in the north, especially at Vileki Luki. Now, we've got three full divisions there. Uh, we are going to move this German division here and switch places because he's got his strength kind of north of Peskov. Narva line's the Narva line. Okay. Pocket is achievable. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I think we get that pocket done this turn. Um... I think we can close it this turn. We'll see. You know, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of uh, or many a slip betwixt the hand and the lip. <laughs> if we were drinking tonight, I'd say that. Uh, all right, guys. Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll be back on Tuesday. No live stream tomorrow. Uh, I'd, I'd probably be busy as hell at work. So uh, I'm not going to live stream tomorrow. Uh, but we'll get back after it Tuesday. I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger. That pocket, it's sitting down there. I'll try to get all the air stuff done. I'm also uh, going to try to do the depots offline. Uh, we have taken off or taken more territory, so the depots might be a little off. I'll have to go check those out. But as always, thank you guys so much. Great comments. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, and I'll see you Tuesday. I had a great time. See you guys later. All right.